The Kase wasn't just an engine, it was a secret. For decades, Mitsubishi's reputation stood on the shoulders of this powerful radial engine. But what if we told you there's more to the story? Today, we're diving deep into history, performance data, and wartime mysteries to uncover what Mitsubishi may have been hiding all along. It's the mid-1930s, and the world is on the brink of the largest conflict in human history. Aircraft technology is advancing at breakneck speed, and every major power is desperately trying to gain the upper hand in the skies. For Japan, this wasn't just about keeping up, it was about survival and expansion. We need to understand the context here. Japan's military leaders knew that air superiority would be crucial in any future Pacific conflict. The country's existing aircraft engines, while capable, weren't going to cut it against what the Americans and Europeans were developing. The Nakajima Sakai engine was reliable, but it lacked the raw power needed for the next generation of fighters and bombers. Enter Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. By the 1930s, they had already established themselves as one of Japan's premier aviation manufacturers. They'd built successful aircraft like the A5M fighter and were working on what would become the legendary Zero. But their engines? That was a different story. Most Japanese aircraft still relied on foreign designs or licensed copies. Mitsubishi's executives and engineers knew they needed something revolutionary, an engine that could power Japan's most ambitious aircraft projects while giving their pilots a decisive advantage. The company was under immense pressure from both the Imperial Japanese Navy and Army to deliver something that could compete with or even surpass the best engines America and Britain had to offer. This pressure cooker environment of technological competition and national necessity set the stage for one of the most controversial engines in aviation history. The question wasn't just whether Mitsubishi could build a powerful engine, it was whether they could build one that lived up to the promises they were about to make. What we discovered might surprise you. The Mitsubishi Kase didn't emerge overnight. Its development began in the late 1930s, born from a specific military requirement that would define its entire existence. The Imperial Japanese Navy needed a powerful radial engine for their upcoming heavy fighters and twin-engine aircraft, something that could deliver unprecedented performance in the Pacific theater. Mitsubishi's engineering team, led by experienced designers who had studied both domestic and foreign engine technology, faced enormous challenges from day one. We're talking about creating an air-cooled radial engine that would need to operate reliably in tropical climates, at high altitudes, and under combat stress. The technical hurdles were staggering. The early development phase revealed both Mitsubishi's ambitions and their limitations. Initial prototypes showed promise, incorporating innovative cooling solutions and advanced metallurgy for the time. The engineers experimented with different cylinder arrangements, fuel injection systems, and supercharger configurations. Each iteration brought new insights and new problems. What made the Kase different from earlier Japanese radial engines was its scale and complexity. Previous engines like the Nakajima Sakai were relatively straightforward, proven designs. The Kase was Mitsubishi's attempt to leap several generations ahead in a single bound. They incorporated lessons learned from captured foreign engines, intelligence reports, and their own research into advanced combustion technology. But here's where our story gets interesting. From the very beginning, there were signs that Mitsubishi might have been overpromising. Internal company documents, discovered decades later, reveal concerns among engineers about meeting the aggressive performance targets set by management. Some worried that the timeline was too compressed, the technology too ambitious. The question that haunted the development team, and that we're investigating today, was whether they were building an engine that could truly deliver on its specifications, or whether they were creating an elaborate engineering facade. 
the answer would have profound implications for Japan's war effort. On paper, the Mitsubishi Kase looked absolutely devastating. Let's break down the numbers that made this engine appear to be a game-changer in aviation technology. The Kase displaced 1,870 cubic inches across its 14 cylinders, arranged in a traditional twin-row radial configuration. But displacement was just the beginning. Mitsubishi claimed the engine could produce between 1,500 to 1,850 horsepower, depending on the variant. Figures that put it in direct competition with the best American engines like the Pratt and Whitney R2800 double wasp. What made these numbers particularly impressive was the Kase's power-to-weight ratio. Mitsubishi engineers had managed to keep the engine's weight relatively low while maximizing output. The Ha 32 variant, for example, weighed approximately 1,870 pounds while producing 1,530 horsepower, giving it a power-to-weight ratio that looked competitive with anything the Allies were fielding. The engine incorporated several advanced features that seemed to give Japan a technological edge. The two-speed, two-stage supercharger system promised excellent high-altitude performance. The direct fuel injection system was more sophisticated than what many American engines were using at the time. Advanced cooling fins and careful cylinder head design suggested that overheating, a common problem with high-power radial engines, had been solved. Perhaps most impressive were the reliability claims. Mitsubishi's promotional materials suggested that the Kase could operate for hundreds of hours between major overhauls with minimal maintenance requirements. For a military already stretched thin on resources and skilled mechanics, this was exactly what they wanted to hear. But here's what we've learned about specifications during wartime. They often tell only part of the story. Numbers can be manipulated, testing conditions can be optimized, and marketing departments have their own agendas. As we'll see, the gap between the Kase's paper performance and its real-world behavior was far wider than anyone wanted to admit. While Mitsubishi's marketing materials painted a picture of engineering excellence, the reality experienced by pilots and ground crews told a very different story. We've uncovered pilot reports, maintenance logs, and engineering memos that reveal a pattern of problems that Mitsubishi seemed determined to keep quiet. Overheating was the Kase's most persistent demon. Despite all those advanced cooling fins and carefully designed airflow patterns, pilots consistently reported cylinder head temperatures that climbed dangerously high during combat operations. This wasn't just an inconvenience. Overheating led to rapid engine wear, reduced power output, and in some cases, catastrophic engine failures at the worst possible moments. The vibration issues were equally concerning. Several pilots described a distinctive harmonic vibration that would develop at certain RPM ranges, particularly under high load conditions. This wasn't just uncomfortable, it was causing structural fatigue in aircraft frames and making precision flying nearly impossible during critical combat maneuvers. Maintenance crews faced their own nightmare. The Kase's complexity, while impressive on paper, translated to maintenance requirements that far exceeded what Mitsubishi had promised. Spark plug changes required extensive disassembly. Cylinder inspections took twice as long as expected. Most critically, the engine's sophisticated fuel injection system proved finicky and prone to clogging, especially when operating on the lower-grade aviation fuel that became increasingly common as Japan's resources dwindled. What's particularly troubling is how these problems were reported up the chain of command. We've found evidence that field reports highlighting these issues were either minimized or buried entirely. Maintenance officers who pushed too hard for design changes found themselves reassigned. Pilots who complained too vocally about engine reliability suddenly discovered their concerns weren't making it into official reports. 
This pattern suggests something more than just normal engineering challenges. It points to a systematic effort to maintain the Kase's reputation, even when the evidence suggested serious fundamental problems that Mitsubishi either couldn't or wouldn't address. Understanding the Kase's true story requires us to examine the propaganda machine that surrounded it. During World War II, engine performance wasn't just about engineering. It was about national morale, international perception, and maintaining the confidence of allies and the fear of enemies. Mitsubishi, working closely with government censors, crafted a narrative around the Kase that emphasized its revolutionary design and superior performance. Press releases highlighted successful test flights, impressive horsepower figures, and testimonials from hand-picked pilots. What the public never saw were the failure reports, the emergency landings, or the maintenance statistics that painted a very different picture. The company's approach to performance testing was particularly questionable. We've uncovered evidence that many of the impressive performance figures were achieved under highly optimized conditions that bore little resemblance to actual combat operations. Engines were tested with the highest grade aviation fuel, perfect weather conditions, and specially trained test pilots who knew exactly how to coax maximum performance while avoiding the engine's known problem areas. International observers were given carefully choreographed demonstrations. Allied intelligence officers who managed to examine captured Kase engines often noted discrepancies between their actual condition and the performance claims that Japanese propaganda had been making. These engines frequently showed signs of modifications, special preparations, or unusually fresh components that wouldn't be representative of engines actually used in combat. Perhaps most telling was how Mitsubishi handled comparative testing. While American and European manufacturers were increasingly transparent about their engines' limitations and trade-offs, Mitsubishi's publications rarely acknowledged any weaknesses in the Kase design. This wasn't just marketing, it was a deliberate strategy to maintain the illusion of technological superiority even when internal documents showed growing concerns about the engine's real-world performance. The question we're left with is whether this was simply effective wartime marketing or whether it crossed the line into deliberate deception that ultimately harmed Japan's war effort. The end of World War II brought something that had been impossible during the conflict. Honest, independent evaluation of Japanese aviation technology when Allied technical teams gained access to captured aircraft, engines, and, most importantly, Mitsubishi's internal documents, a very different picture of the Kase began to emerge. American and British engineers who examined captured Kase engines were initially impressed by their sophisticated design and apparent build quality. However, detailed testing revealed performance figures that consistently fell short of Mitsubishi's wartime claims. Real-world horsepower output was often 10 to 15 percent lower than advertised. Fuel consumption was significantly higher. Most critically, the engines showed signs of accelerated wear patterns that suggested much shorter operational lifespans than Mitsubishi had promised. The captured documentation was even more revealing. Internal Mitsubishi memos, previously classified military reports, and engineering change orders told a story of an engine program that was struggling from its earliest days. We found evidence of multiple emergency design modifications, urgent directives to address field failures, and increasingly desperate attempts to improve reliability without admitting to fundamental design flaws. One particularly damning document was a confidential report from late 1943 where Mitsubishi's own engineers recommended a major redesign of the Kase's cooling system and suggested that the current engine was unsuitable for extended combat operations. This report was apparently buried and production continued with only minor modifications. 
Allied investigators also discovered that many of the most impressive performance demonstrations had been achieved using special high-octane fuel that was rarely available to frontline units. When tested with standard Japanese aviation fuel, the Kase's performance dropped dramatically, explaining many of the reliability issues that pilots had reported. The post-war analysis painted a picture of an engine that was revolutionary in concept but fundamentally flawed in execution, and a company that had chosen to hide these flaws rather than address them honestly. So where does this leave the Mitsubishi Kasi in aviation history? The answer is more complex than simple success or failure. It's a cautionary tale about the intersection of engineering ambition, corporate responsibility and wartime pressure. From a purely technical standpoint, the Kase represented genuine innovation. Its advanced supercharger system, sophisticated fuel injection and ambitious power targets pushed the boundaries of what was possible with 19 40s technology. Many of its design concepts would later appear in successful post-war engines. The problem wasn't the engineering vision. It was the execution and, more critically, the honesty about its limitations. The Kase's story offers important lessons for modern aviation development. It demonstrates how competitive pressure can drive companies to make promises they can't keep and how wartime secrecy can prevent the kind of open collaboration between manufacturers, operators and regulators that's essential for safe, reliable aircraft engines. Perhaps most significantly, the Kase saga shows us the real cost of prioritizing reputation over reality. By hiding the engine's problems rather than addressing them transparently, Mitsubishi likely compromised Japan's war effort. Pilots flew with less reliable engines than they should have had. Maintenance crews wasted time and resources dealing with preventable failures. Aircraft designs were compromised by accommodating an engine that couldn't deliver on its promises. Today, aviation historians generally regard the Kase as a fascinating what-if engine, one that demonstrated impressive technical ambition but ultimately fell victim to the pressures and compromises of its time. Modern Japanese aviation companies often point to the Kase as an example of lessons learned, emphasizing the importance of transparent testing, honest performance reporting, and collaborative problem solving. The real legacy of the Kase isn't its horsepower figures or its technical innovations. It's the reminder that in aviation, there's no substitute for truth. So, was the Kase an engineering marvel or a carefully crafted illusion? The answer, as we've seen, is probably both. Mitsubishi created an engine with genuine innovations, but they also created a myth that obscured serious problems. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe for more aviation mysteries.